just explain to us how significant these temperature rises are that we're seeing now in 2022 compared to, say, the last 100 years? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's aware that we are experiencing some of the hottest temperatures we've ever seen in the country. Um, almost every uh, every year we're, we're seeing new records broke either on a on a monthly basis or an annual basis is the hottest, you know, July or the hottest year. Consistently, these records are tumbling and getting hotter and hotter. So it's a trend that we've been predicting for some time. And now we're really starting to see that uh, in real life. Here's my question then, Tim, and this might not be your area of specialism. So forgive me if it isn't, but I'm sure you'll have an opinion because I think you live, eat and breathe the environment, don't you? If we've known for a long time that the temperatures are heating up, why haven't we done more to improve our infrastructure? We were just seeing pictures there of reservoirs that are half full. Uh, we all know that businesses have to close down in the last heat wave. People were told to work from home. The trains come to a halt. Why haven't we done a better job of preparing for these changes? Uh, OK, that's a really good question with a, probably quite a complex answer. And I'll just give you, you know, one, one viewpoint of that. I think in terms of infrastructure in the UK, a lot of it is highly regulated. So there's always this back and forth between uh, the companies, uh, the regulator, the government, and, and the tension to keep costs down. So to some extent, it's a bit like driving an old car. You know, you can keep, um, you know, servicing it, repairing it, uh, but eventually it will come to a time when you need to, to look to replace it. And that's a, that's more expensive than just servicing your car. So, uh, you know, ac across across the infrastructure communities, they've done actually a really good job of, of keeping these really old assets going for a long time. Mm -hmm. But we do need to, to look to the future and see how these extreme weather events are going to become more commonplace and... How do we, you know, prepare our infrastructure now um, for these these coming extreme climates? Well, the, we are in what the governments would, across the world are call, calling this fourth industrial revolution in the history of humanity at the moment. So what does that look like, Tim? What do we need to do in order to live with this climate change? Oh, that's a great question. I spent some time a couple of years ago in Cape Town when literally the whole city ran out of water. And it was fascinating because coming from a UK context, going there and you know living off a fraction of the water that we do here. Um, so we would you know stand in the shower and have a shower for maybe ten seconds, turn it off while you're standing in a bucket, capturing that water. That water is then reused, poured into you know, a grey water uh, recycling system, or maybe used to wash the clothes. So the water is used, you know, more than once before it goes into the drain. So there's things mm. like that that we can do in terms of how we use water, and that's a really extreme example. But it's coming from a part of the world where they face these kind of conditions more frequently than we do in the UK. I think here we're really used to just consuming mm. water and not really even thinking about it. Um, some people still even leave the tap on while they're brushing their teeth. So there are simple yeah. things we can do and a lot more complex ones as well.